Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I want to just do one sample sprint interval um, to compl complement the video that I talked about sprints and we're getting into talking about different kinds of workouts. Uh, the people I work with um, as far as getting training programs together, I put together a regimen of different kinds of sprints. But um, after looking around and being familiar with some of the videos on YouTube, uh, like example, there's a video GCN made about sprinting where Daniel Lloyd, Lloyd is riding on the road and he puts it in a big gear and he barely gets the gear rolling. And I just, I guess it's their format is more for entertainment than really educational. So what I want to show you today is the kind of cadence it takes to get across the line first you know so you're not going to beat anybody by putting it in a big gear and and waiting to get the momentum because most of the sprints you're already at speed in the mid 30s before you really launch so i want to show you what you have to train for if you aspire to be the first across the line or the first to the city limit what what rpm ranges you need to train your brain and your muscles to be able to handle. So I'm going to show you on the bike. I uh, let me turn on the head unit here because I'm going to try to display my cadence. I've got a speed sensor on there. I hope it picks it up. I used it once before and it worked, so it should. I've got the uh, Colnago on here. I just got back from a ride. The assumption is you've warmed up. Um, Yeah, the speed's working, that's what I need. You're not going to see a heart rate. I took off the heart rate belt. Um, the assumption is you, you, you just, you've warmed up. I'm not putting it in a 14 or a 15. What you have to focus on when you're sprinting is, it has to be a gear that you can take from 90 or 85 and go into high triple digits. So I'm gonna put it, I'm in a, Let's see, 16 back there or 15. And what I, what I want to show you are the kind of cadences that you have to regularly hit to be one of the top guys. Because when you're sprinting, depending on the level or the, the category you're in, you want to have that snap to get a gap so no one can get in your draft when you launch your sprint. So I'm gonna try this sprint here. Let me put it in the big chain ring. So you want to start in a gear that is a little heavy, but one that by the time you're done, you're going to be more than 110 RPMs. Okay, so I'm going to do one first. This is simulating a sprint on a flat road, say like with a tailwind. I don't do a whole lot of sprinting out of the saddle. I start, if the speed is low, I'll start out of the saddle and then sit, which is what I'm gonna simulate here. So let's say you're rolling around 27, 28 miles an hour and you're ready to go on your sprint. Let's see what I got here, 27.5 kilometers. Let me get the speed up. Then you sit, and you wind it. That's a speed sprint. If you're sprinting up a hill, you're going to be a little more conservative in your gear selection. I'll let my breathing come down. I want you guys to see the kind of cadence when you sprint. You're going 140 or more. Especially if you're in a race where they have what they call prings, where you're sprinting for prizes, 
before the end of the race. You keep your cadence up to save your legs. Like right now, our legs are not burning. I mean, I just rode for an hour. So when you're doing this workout, you want to warm up for at least 20 minutes before you start. And depending on your goals, if it's something that's important to you, you do as many as you can on your sprint day. Yeah, my breathing's coming back down. So that was one sprint. I saw about 150 on there. I'll review it after the video to see, but. So that was one thing where the speed started before I went around, uh, it was probably under 25 miles an hour. I don't know what speed I hit, but I'm more, I focus more on the cadence. The reason I focus on the cadence is you, have, you want to select a gear that you will be on top of and spin it. And even if you need a shift, you can. That's why I start my sprint out of the saddle. And if necessary, I sit. So I can still shift if I need to. I mean, sometimes you don't get that opportunity if the sprint's very competitive. So gear selection is critical. If you're going up a hill, you want to make sure you select a gear that you will not be bogged down in. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you guys today. The kind of cadence. So I'll do one more sprint and then wrap this video up. One more speed sprint. Flat road sprint. All of that's anaerobic. Your body does not tap into oxygen. The effort is too short for even your heart rate to react. So you're using glycogen. And that's why you gotta save it for high efforts. But those kind of efforts are almost preparatory for when you're closing gaps, opening gaps, that kind of a burst. 130 RPM, boom, you jump. And before somebody can react, the gap is there. And then you shift up and you consolidate it. I will cover that in future workout videos about attacks and the other ones that I'm planning on doing for the different kind of efforts. But this is just a sample, so that's a sprint workout on a flat road. Whether there's wind or no wind, doesn't matter. The gear selection will change based on the conditions. But your goal is spinning, find a gear that you can spin because if your legs seize up, you're not gonna be very competitive. Because sometimes sprints don't always go like you plan. So you gotta have a little, you gotta have a little something in the bank. And by spinning, you can always shift up if something happens and keep that speed going. So I hope this at least gives you guys an, an idea of what sprinting is about. Cause that's stuff that GCN did. Somebody sent me the link and he put it in a big gear. He told us a 14 or whatever. We didn't see any metrics or anything. So we couldn't tell, but it didn't look like he went very, very far. So you got to spin out the gear if you want to build speed. Because we'll talk about other workouts to build strength on the bike, especially in the winter. So, hope you guys get a chance to get some miles out on the trainer or on the road. I wore these two different shoes because I wanted you guys to see my feet easier as I did these two sprints. That's why.